Les Hinton, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you very much, Zainab. It's good to be here. What was it like working alongside Rupert Murdoch for more than 50 years? It was, it was hard work. It was, it was um, stirring, it was exciting, it was infuriating, uh, and occasionally it was agony. Uh, but it was, th th there were great years uh, over a long period of time. I began as a 15-year-old buying him his sandwiches in the morning, and I ended up running a large company in, in New York. So quite a meteoric rise from sort of fairly humble beginnings. But you say in your memoirs, maybe News Corp was a personality cult. Maybe, surely it was or it wasn't. It depends how you define a personality cult. But, but he certainly dominated the company. And it's certainly true that, that describing it as a personality cult didn't actually occur to me until I'd left the company, which may be in and of itself proof of the fact that it was. Surely it must have occurred to you that this man with so much power you know, that he, it was a personality cult. I mean, you say that, you know, executives wanted to get close to him and very needy and wanting to, you know, always brush shoulders with that, Rupert That's Murdoch. true. He, he, he was like a... Uh, when he was in the office, uh, people were... They changed. When, when I was running um, the company in London uh, years ago and I would announce to my executives, all very seasoned, very experienced people, Rupert's coming to town, you would see this this shiver through the through the room and it was a mixture of apprehension and excitement because they really loved to have him around but he could be for some of them terrifying terrifying but also he made a lot of enemies didn't he and you say in your book that he basically bought off many of them you'd be quite generous with their severance pay but he'd say to you les be even more generous i mean he basically used his money to buy silence well that 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 is you're 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 relating two things that don't really connect my point about his generosity. Well, he could be a tough employer and he did dismiss people, but um, often I would, upon deciding someone should leave or be, upon he and I agreeing they should be, I would take the action and I would describe to him what uh, severance I was proposing. In those situations, and these would be, would be editors or executives that hadn't quite worked out, he was always generous with them. It wasn't they had nothing to be silent about. He was, he was just being generous with them. But you did also say that you and others fantasise about being able to have enough money so that you could go and say uh, goodbye. Person... I, I won't say because it, it was no, rather, no, I think probably not, rather yeah. obscene the way you put it. <clears throat> but anyway, you just you know get lost or, or less polite words, Rupert. It was look. The, the fact is there was a, there was a lot of, of pressure working for him, and I suppose there was something like a blitz spirit, and so. We would fantasize that if, uh, that if we had enough money and he was being especially difficult, uh, that we would be able to knock on the door and, and he'd say, yes, Les, and I'd say, Rupert, and then I would use the curse that ended with off, uh, and we all would have a good laugh. But I... I so when, when he, there's a question of humour and some apprehension working for him, but I always had, for instance, a plastic GI helmet in my office with a, with a razor blade, a plastic razor blade stuck to it. And the joke was, when he called me up and I knew, say, his assistant at the time had a great way of giving you semel, which he'd say, put your, and she'd say to me, put your helmet on, love. And I knew, therefore, it was going to be a, a bad conversation. Right. But it, was, it wasn't a question of living in mortal fear. It was a question of dealing in your way with the tension of working for him. But a lot has been said about the fact that he's got very strong political views. To what extent do you think his newspaper empire reflected his own personal views? I mean, would he pick up the phone to editors and say, he, look, he, I think you should he, do this he and He expressed that. his views a lot. But he was careful about how he did it. First of all, obviously, we, there's this talk of, of, of Rupert's uh, sort of dictating to all his editors what they think and say. Yeah. And that's, that's not actually true in the way it's expressed, because obviously he was play, played a part in choosing the editors, and he chose like-minded editors. That didn't mean... Uh, that on occasions, on many occasions, the editors would do things that didn't please him. Really? Because I want to give you a quote which has been disputed by Rupert Murdoch, attributed the veteran journalist Anthony Hinton, no relative. Uh, he asked Rupert Murdoch in 2016 why he was so opposed to the European Union, because of course he backed Brexit. Yeah. And Rupert apparently replied, that's easy. When I go to 10 Downing Street, where the British Prime Minister lives, they do what I say. When I go to Brussels, they take no notice. Well, I never heard him say that um, or anything like it. I mean, he cared a great deal about... He's, he's, he is very interested in politics uh, and he's very interested in media and he's very interested in news. But, but you never heard him say that, but does it, does it sound right? Does no, it ring I, true? I mean, no, because I, I, I was on many occasions with him at, at, at Downing Street or, or at, at dinners with politicians, 
but but it is a bit of a myth. In fact, it's a complete fiction to 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 admit to it to um, imagine that he somehow was able with his with with some mysterious power to dictate to these politicians what they should do because. He clearly didn't. But they went in and out. They all courted him. Tony Blair, whom he famously sure, backed. Sure, you know, they, sure. So if he wasn't that influential or powerful, why would the politicians no, all be lining up to see him? Well, newspaper, well th that's a great question. And, the, and news, uh, politicians long since have attributed enormous power to uh, newspapers to influence general And rightly election. so. Well, that's debatable. That's what I would say. Is debate. it? Because I have to tell you, but, though, just say, because just before we go on to that point, it's debatable, you see, but the Labour leader, Neil Kinnock, when he lost the general election to John Major in 1992, yes. um, he, this is what he said. He said, never in the past nine elections has the anti-Tory, anti-Labour press come out so strongly in favour of the Conservatives. Never has their attack on the Labour Party been so comprehensive. This was how the election was won. So Neil Kinnock's mind, no doubt, he lost the election because of the anti-Labour press. Well, then, then if, the, if, the, if the, he's saying if the, if the press were more supportive of him, he would have won. Uh, and I think, as with most politicians, it's very rare, and there are other examples more recent, for a politician not to find um, excuses other than their own shortcomings. Uh, and just as in 97, when, when um, we supported Blair in that election, uh, there was this great talk about how we'd actually helped Blair win. But the yeah. truth is that Blair was far beyond the need of any kind of assistance from anybody and had no need to be... But the newspaper, I mean, the Sun newspaper, yeah. which is the widest, uh, wide, most widely read newspaper in the United Kingdom, it said after um, the defeat of Labour, yeah. it was the Sun what won it. Sorry, terrible grammar, but anyway, that's what it, was, it said. It was good Sun grammar. Yeah, it was good Sun grammar. <laughs> it was the Sun what won it. So the Sun yeah. itself is saying, look, know. you know, we've got all this influence and power. I know. But, uh, yeah, they did, yes. But it's, it's silly of them because they didn't, no one knew. I mean, it was a close election. It was a very close election and you could argue on the margin that would have made some difference. But, but Neil Kinnock stood for election and Neil Kinnock lost. But the point that I'm making is obviously that, um, you know, there's this overweening power of this press baron, Rupert Murdoch, and, you know, he's not elected and, you know, people are uncomfortable with that. So now if you look at his plans to try to take full control of the pan-European broadcaster Sky, the UK regulator, Britain's Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA, says the Sky acquisition would give the Murdoch family too much control over news providers across all media platforms and therefore too much influence over public opinion. Yes. Yeah, you agree with that. I, I agree that, that was what they said, but it's also true that the European Commission, who are much more historically strict on matters of, of, of monopoly and antitrust, uh, they cleared that they cleared it back in 19, in 2011. But what and do you recently. think? But it's it's a fair comment, isn't it? It's justified well, it, concern. It, it's 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 well, it, it, it's justified to be concerned. But if you consider that that to all intents and purposes, for 20 years, Sky News, which is the principal uh, news outlet he has in this country, for 20 or five, five years, his company has been effectively in control of it. They own 30 percent of the of the shares, and there's never been a murmur. A murmur about the. So you think fact, it should I, go ahead? I, you think it should, obviously. I, 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 I think that the argument that then the, the, obviously with these deals there are other issues to do with. Sure, monopolies. but it's this but idea of, of concentrating it, too okay. much influence over public of, opinion. Yes, and that, that, that's a fair point. But, but honestly, okay. I, so it is a fair point. I, 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 you've made a fair point, except that you, I think, with respect, you're fighting an old battle because the dissemination of news now, the atomization of news opinions, the access of a wide variety of points of view on, online, uh, through, through Facebook, through Google, I mean, there are massive, there's a massive variety. So someone, newspapers are no longer uh, as influential as they the, the, were, the, well, obviously. Uh, nowhere Sales near going down. But of course, what's replacing this concern, which is now a bit dated, is the power and the anarchy of the internet, where the things can be said to millions of people in this country from outside, uh, through, uh, sure, from areas sure. where there's no libel control, there's no slander control, there's no ethical control. So that's the real modern argument, and I think politicians... Well, it doesn't preclude you being concerned about what no, the but, but I think, News I think, Corp is doing. But I think, I think some politicians in this country uh, who have developed this passion uh, against Rupert are using... They're fighting an old battle. That's not the argument anymore, is my view.